All right, guys, welcome to episode nine of the CBR VFR hybrid build. We're still assembling the rear end of the bike. We had some more parts come in so we can make some headway on that. We got the shock back yesterday. Okay, yeah, so look at the shock. Shock's looking good. This is a shock off a of CBR 954. It's been completely reserviced with nitrogen and oil. So this bad boy is ready to go on. We had the bearing come in for this hub. This is something that held us up for a while. So we got to get this bearing in this thing right here. I revisited some items from previous episodes, um, namely was last episode. You guys gave me some heat for it and I should have known better. I pulled off the rear caliper, pulled it apart, greased the pins so everything would be nice and lubricated in there now. So we got that done. Another thing I did was I pulled the swing arm back off because there was a couple bearings in there that I didn't pack with grease. And you guys notice that. Know that the bearings were pre-greased already and think about a swing arm. Swing arm doesn't get a lot of activity on a bearing. It's not like a wheel where it's spinning at high speed, it just gets a little bit of motion. But you know what? It was easy to pull the swing arm off at this point. The bearings almost slid right out. I packed them with grease, threw them back in, so now we're good to go. Another thing I worked on was the rear brake rotor. It's an aftermarket piece and it didn't have the holes drilled in it for me uh, to keep this. This is the ABS ring right here. So what I did was I took the ABS ring off the old rotor. Um, I grabbed this rotor here. I took it off. I took it down to my buddy's shop, drilled it, tapped it. And now we're gonna have the ABS ring on the back brake. Feeling good about having that back on the bike. So let's start putting all these pieces back on the rear end. All right guys, so I put this hub in the oven at 200 degrees and I put this bearing right here in the freezer for, you know, like 15 minutes or so. Pull them out real fast, hammered in the bearing, it slid in pretty easy. And now we just have this seal right here that goes here. Rubber mallet. Just flush with the top edge here. And then there's this collar here. It just goes in the, there. And that's done. I also did the same thing to this dog bone that's for mounting the shock on the bike. Um, heated this up, put these two bearings in the freezer. I got this one bearing started. I got this one in most of the way, but I'm noticing that the bearing doesn't turn. I'm thinking somehow these holes got jacked up in the, in the powder coating process or something. So I'm going to revisit this piece here. I think I have a spare bearing right here. So I'm going to keep working on this. We'll get it figured out and see if we can get this on the bike today. Okay. So now let's get this back wheel assembly back on here. I think we can get the whole thing done. At this point, we'll get the shock back on the bike. Even if I can't get that dog bone done today with those bearings, still we can get the shock on here. We'll just keep building till we get it as far as we can and then we'll call it a day. Let's do it. So these are the uh, rubber cushions that go between this hub and that other hub I just put on. It's for the rear sprocket just to soften everything up in there. These just slide over these veins right here. These are new, by the way. The old ones were just junk. Okay, now this is the ABS device here. So uh, that goes that way. And I already put a little bit of Loctite on these two bolts. So you people don't come unglued about, where's the Loctite? He's not using Loctite. I don't show you guys every little thing I do, but I try to most of the time. And just snug these down good. You don't have to crank down on them hard. You don't have to torque them. Not everything needs a torque on it. Now, I put a little bit of lithium grease on the sides of these rubber pads here so this will slide on easier. Let's put this bad boy on. She's tight. Then, then that'll push it on the rest of the way here. So you can see here, I got a new nut and washer. Here's the old one. Little details like this can make or break a build. You wanna put nice new hardware on your bike. You put on something like this, that's just tattered and worn. Little details like this could just ruin your build. I'm just gonna put these on pretty snug. Uh, I can't torque it down until I get the back wheel on. Oh, come on. There we go. And then 
and then here's my $40 46 millimeter socket. Oh my god. Anybody want to buy this thing off of me? Because I doubt I'll ever use it again after today. Now these threads on this shaft are always stubborn because it has kind of like a locking, self-locking mechanism. So I'm just going to put that on right there. We'll get the back wheel on then I can tighten that down better and torque it down. Let's get on the sprocket. Nice new black sprocket, 49 teeth. I think it's, yeah, it's a Sunstar sprocket. Sunstar. So, the black against the red just looks sick. Speaking of having nice bolts, these are the stock sprocket bolts. You can see they're kind of grimy looking right there. So, easy to fix. Spray a little bit of brake parts cleaner on a rag. And just, look at that. Takes it right off. Just years of grime. Looks like new without buying new. You can also see here that the threads got some white gunk in them. So I just simply come in here with a wire wheel. Boom. Nice. Okay, so you can see here, here's the stock nuts for the rear sprocket. Pretty crappy looking. Check these out. This is a kit, uh, who makes these? Driven Sprocket Nuts Red Kit, number 57-6H67. I got these from Tucker.com. Just take off the lid. Now, the only difference between these nuts and the stock nuts is this is a locking nut, this isn't. So, you want to make sure you use a good dose of Loctite on these bad boys. But, that is a good looking nut. All right, so if we don't have enough problems with this build, got a new situation here. I was just checking these bolt sizes, and this will not go in the sprocket hole, which I don't understand because I ordered this for the VFR 800. These holes are too big. This hole is too small. We're going to have to drill these out. So just drilling out this sprocket, jacked it up. You can see the swirl marks in here from the shilling spinning around. The backside got pretty jacked up from just rubbing around on the shillings. So I'm gonna get this thing powder coated, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and just mount it on the bike hand tight. Um, so what we're gonna do is we have this hub here. I'm just gonna put the uh, studs back in. These are like a light press fit. You can't just, well, let's get the washer off there. You can't just um, slide them through and have them drop all the way down. You gotta tap them in. Like a so. So I'll do that around here and then we'll put the sprocket on. I don't know about you guys, but I love anodized parts. The only thing I don't like about anodized nuts when you start wrenching on them then the anodizing starts getting scratched and next thing you know the red starts looking silver even bought a new end cap because the last one was just tattered that just goes right there another nice little detail all right guys I want your opinion on this thing I have this t-rex body armor I've had for a while to put on this bike and this mounts right here on the sprocket you know as protection in case you crash but I don't know what do you guys think about it I personally think it's kind of bulky and bulbous hides this beautiful clean looking Ducati looking thing with the guard without the guard let's hear them comments
old ones, new ones. Just snugging all this down right now because I may have to take it off again later, so I don't want to get too crazy with all this stuff. What do you guys think of those spikes? All right, guys, that is it for this episode. The back wheel is looking great. We'll finish getting the shock mounted up, but you're going to want to be here for the next video. It's going to be epic. We're putting on the see through clutch cover, and this thing is amazing. So come check that out. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified when the videos come out. Once again, if you want to be the owner of this amazing V4 bike, go right here, sign up to donate to the series. You also get a set of speed and strength riding gear and four people every month will be getting some cool stuff. So go check that out. See you guys in about a week.